people call me a has-been? What does that even mean? Today I wanna to talk about that. So we are at my storage unit. My mom recently moved from my childhood home and I helped her with that and I got a lot of boxes and my mom kept every single thing times 10. That is a separate issue, but I was able to get a lot of nostalgic stuff. So let's see what I've got. No judgment, guys, okay? Ugh. Welcome to the skeletons in my closet right here. You know this concept of relevance or that horrible phrase that everybody in my industry hates to hear? Has been. You know what? that term. That term is a horrible term because what it means is that your value, your worth, your career that you've built for many, many years, maybe your whole life, has pretty much been completed. You're not needed, you're not wanted. Please see yourself out the door and don't pass go, don't collect money. And I say screw that. That's not true. Everything that you've done should be celebrated and understood by the people that care about you, your fans. You guys have been super supportive of me over the years. So let's talk about all the different aspects of being a relevant has-been or something. I'm gonna sit on this suitcase. Because why not, y'all? So I watched a documentary the other day called Val. It was amazing. What spoke to me about the documentary is the messaging of him going to Comic-Cons and feeling as though he's grateful to have the interactions with his fans, but that some people might think it's a fate worse than death if you have to go and show up at different cities and belittle yourself to basically just sit at a table. I, I don't think that's hard work because I, I have done Comic-Cons in the past and I was itching to do Comic-Cons. They were only in San Diego. And then since Kim Possible came out, which was what, like 15 years ago? I don't even know. More than that, maybe. It's like become regional. Every single big city and even small cities have Comic-Cons. And it's great because it unifies so many different people, fans, all the different shows uh, and fandoms. They come together and they have a safe space to celebrate and wear costumes. It's a super positive thing. I have mad love for conventions. I do think it's really interesting that like you're at a Comic-Con and say, you're gonna sign something like this. So like this is me. This was when I was on Broadway. Life changing for me. To like roll up after I've been working super hard, I get told to go outside and I look up and I see myself literally on Times Square. And we're not talking about something that flashed and went away. We're talking like this lived there for months and months and months and months and months, for almost a year. So that people would look up and they would buy tickets to go. Because my face, that's so crazy. And so if you're at a Comic-Con, and you sign something like this. It is a mind F, I'll say it that way. You're looking at a moment in time when you couldn't be more relevant. Then your flashback to I'm here, I'm signing. And it's like this like really strange dynamic. And so when I was watching Val, I really, really felt that. Those days are not as easy as you think. They're almost as tough as being on set for like 12 hours a day because you're there on your feet, moving to panel to panel, smiling, talking to people. There's no downtime unless you're in a green room or going to the bathroom. So you have to pace yourself and it's three days of that. It's not glamorous, but boy, is it really gratifying because I've had so many people come up to me and talk about how many things that I was in that they were able to connect with their parents, watching it, sitting down together. And honestly, that's just a blessing because of the shows that I was in. So that's a testament of all that. Okay, so obviously this is taking a beating. I am such a hometown girl. When my dad was alive, he loved politics and he had some friends in Connecticut politics. He managed to get the 22nd day of February, my own holiday in my town. Nobody ever celebrates it, but it's there. And like, I even went to the Capitol. I was on the floor of Congress and they gave this to me. I've got to rehome it because my old dog bit this and like, I, ha I have to protect this. There's certain things that you really want to protect and keep in good shape. Shape. It's one thing to hoard stuff and to just have it all rusty and gross. That's creepy. You might as well just throw that out. But if it's something important to you, you kind of want to keep it nice. I want to show my girls when they get older that I have these things. This is important to me. What else is in here? This is so cool. This is impossible. This is the Happy Meal. For me, growing up an 80s child, like the arches and the Happy Meal and everything that that meant and having a toy in the Happy Meal, that was super relevant to me. This is a big win for me. Oh, did you know that I wrote a book? It's called Grace's Turn. Dude, this was a good book. I did not write it alone. I had someone that helped me write it, but I was very, 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 very involved with the crafting of the development of the character. This is a semi-autobiographical book. I've got like 20 copies here, and I think maybe there's not too many out there. Look at that. It's like from the star of Disney's Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. So if you want to talk about relevance, the reason why the book was even sold was because I recently had done something. It doesn't matter how much talent you have. You're as good as your like last gig and how successful that was. Go ahead and read it. Comment below if you have read it. Tell me what you liked about 
about it. I'm really proud of it. Oh. So did you guys know that I was a huge Leo DiCaprio fan? Like every other girl. My husband looks a little bit like him, so I have a type for sure. And somehow I got from an auction at my school, Titanic Coal. I was so obsessed with that movie. <gasps> it's a piece of Titanic Coal and it's a certificate. Certificate, it's right here. It could totally not be Titanic Coal, but there's a certificate, so it's got to be, right? This one I think is cool. This isn't about politics. This is just about flexing. I've got two presidential pins from George Bush Sr. I was probably around 12 years old. It was before Disney. I was just in some repertory company with kids in New York City and we showed up in DC and they picked randomly kids to do certain like introductions. It was pretty cool. I met President Bush Sr. He gave me these pins. The first time he gave me the pin was when I met him. The second time he gave me the pin was when he showed up to watch me perform on stage. And my mom, who's like the momager that she was, <laughs> let his people know. I don't even know, how do you even like, oh, I'm just gonna go get a president's information. She's pretty fierce. I show up to the theater and I'm like, why are there secret service people? I'm like 12 years old. It was a total surprise. He takes me upstairs. He gives me a hug and he's like, you're doing great. And that was at intermission. So I had a second act and I think he left right about that time. Cool little treasure boxes. Oh boy, look at this. So this is me and Shia. And this is me at my 19th birthday party, right? When we just about wrapped Even Stevens. He was very sweet at that time. I had no idea what was going on in his life, you know, cause like when you watch Honey Boy and stuff, those days when he was doing Even Stevens was rough on him, but I had no idea. And he even wore, it looks like he wore a button up shirt, which was a big deal for Shia. When I like look at all of these, there's a story to every single picture. There's a life here. And that's the other thing. When people know you from a certain time frame in your career and they just think of you as in this one way, they don't realize that you've done stuff before. People don't know that I'm a puppeteer. Super random that I can puppeteer, but I did Avenue Q on Broadway when I was 26. All right, let's look at another box, shall we? This is my Mouseketeer ears, guys. I had to buy it. It wasn't given to me. I have a really cool story that when I went to Walt Disney World a lot, I met the voice of Mickey and Minnie Mouse. They inducted me into being a Mouseketeer. And I believe that this was when I got that hat. It's the dog-legged clencher. It's literally the prop from the Broadway show, Beauty and the Beast, that I had. And I think I stole it. <laughs> Sorry guys, I totally stole this. But it's a dog-legged clencher, get it? So cute. You're not gonna believe this one. If you haven't seen my other nostalgia box opening, you've gotta see this again. I was supposed to do the New York Stock Exchange bill on September 17th, 2008. It was the, uh, the day of the crash. Yeah, that was something that I actually didn't end up doing because I literally missed the cab and I had bad time management skills. It's totally true. This was a happy accident though, because if I had gone down as the person who rang the bell the day that the market crashed, that's a, that's got some weird juju. I've got politician notes and pictures with my dad who's passed on. This is when I was a kid in San Francisco. I have like sheet music that I used to have to prepare when I was doing musical theater auditions, which I would like to do musical theater again. There's a lot of things that I would like to do, whether that brings relevancy in my life or not, it brings relevancy relevancy inside of myself, which I think is the most important thing. Even if you build a career for yourself, it's still temporary, especially when you're female. If you're female in the entertainment industry, you're only as good as the face that you have and the way that you age and what you look like. So I ended up going back to school, but loving producing and directing. And I got into it and I had a blast. What I realized was, is that I actually was really good at running a set because I grew up on a set, right? So directing is something that I wanna do. I've already done it. I had a Christmas movie that I thought was very Disney friendly. In hopes that Disney would hire me as a director. I work hard, I promise. I'm sorry, I'm smiling because I just saw something that I can't wait to show you. <laughs> I have to show it to you, okay. Here is your invitation. The all ages club that I had my 16th birthday party in. Where? Club 141 in Milford, Connecticut. For directions, call this number. When? February 19th. This was because on my actual birthday, which is March 20th, I had traveled with my mom in a minivan to LA and I relocated because the day of my birthday, March 20th, was when I started filming Even Stevens. So I celebrated my birthday a month ahead. Oh my gosh. It's even weird to just see Christy Romano. Like anytime I see my name, especially now that I'm married, the relevancy there, right, is like I'm Christy Romano Rooney in my personal life. And then like when I see my name as just the Christy Romano, 
This is prior to becoming Christy Carlson Romano. <laughs> Guys, I've literally tried to change my name several times. It just didn't work. I'm like, well, I'm CCR for life. CCR for life. Look at this. New York friends will meet at the info booth at Grand Central. The rest will be explained. What to bring? Bring this flyer. <laughs> Yourself and two of our friends. I remember typing that up being like, it has to be our friends. Because it has to be mutual people that we all know. And don't forget to dress trendy. Get out of town. Who did I think I was? Are you coming though? Are you coming to my birthday party? So in general and in summation, I don't feel like a has-been. Every day I grow, I change. And every day I'm relevant. I'm relevant to my husband, my kids, myself. When I look in the mirror, I like who I see. I'm proud of the things that I've done, sure. But every day is a new possibility for a new achievement. And I'm not gonna define myself by a comment, a rude comment at that. So thank you for your support. Thanks for watching the vlog and I'll talk to you guys soon.